Number 10 faces Tory backlash over plans to broaden extremism definition. Boy, I wonder what particular political group it's going to include. It's a mystery. Let's read the article. Figures on right of party fear that move could, could have unintended impact on those with socially conservative views. Like, it's bloody mental. Like, honestly, it's a case of what political party seeks to make its own views, Ill alleged own views, illegal. It makes no bloody sense. Downing Street is facing a backlash from Conservative MPs and peers over moves to create a broader definition of extremism in response to what Rishi Sunak describes as the threat of mob rule. So in other words, what the people want. <laughs> Uh, Michael Gove, the community secretary, is expected to unveil plans next week that would allow the government, universities and local authorities to cut off links to groups identified as extremists. And I've got a feeling that it's specifically just going to be right-wing ones. Just a feeling, you know. Uh, Organisations such as the Muslim Council of Britain and protest groups such as Palestine Action. Okay, alright, okay. I'll, 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 I'll eat my hat, that was, I was wrong, are among those that could be affected by the non-statutory move to block groups from funding or accessing venues if they are regarded as promoting an ideology that undermines British values. The plan was reported by The Observer last year. However, you know, okay then, it wasn't right-wing groups, but it was groups that really don't like another group. <laughs> it's like, hmm, weird that. British values, British, maybe not British values. Maybe the values of another nation. Uh, a minister said on Tuesday that he would not be happy if, for example, gender-critical feminists were labelled as extremists by a change of government policy, which is the intention. You know, let's, let's, let's be very honest. The Trade Minister Greg Hans told Times Radio that the Prime Minister had talked about taking on extremism and the government needed to work on definitions. That's one thing that uh, legislation really struggles with is the definition of things. They love that, like I've said very many times, they love definitions being vague. They love the laws being vague because that makes it easier for them to selectively prosecute. Uh, the government sec the community secretary, Michael Gove, is doing that right now. More work is being done, but obviously we need to target real extremism and not just a difference of views, honestly held views about these things, he added. No, no, there's going to be... Uh, if you think a man's a man and you think uh, illegal immigration is bad, no. Also, you must love Israel. Must. Must. <clears throat> Joke. Uh, the right-wing Tory MP Miriam Cates and Lord Frost, the high-profile right-wing peer, are among those who have expressed opposition amid concerns that the move, move could have an adv inadvertent imp inadvertent no it's on purpose impact on anti-abortion groups advocates for socially conservative causes and those opposed to transgender rights they're not opposed to transgender rights right it's a case of i feel that everyone no matter what should have the exact same human rights as everybody else no more no less which means if you commit a crime against me and I commit a crime against you, we both should be facing the same sentence, right? One of us shouldn't be facing a much more extreme sentence because of who the other person was, right? That's privilege. Uh, any attempt, but any, it's, uh, I'm not, right, do I think, I, I think that you shouldn't be able to just go up and assault and murder trans people, you know, I think that everyone should have that right, that you're not allowed to inflict violence upon them, but I also feel that you should be able to say to them, I disagree, I feel that you should be, but that's when they go, you're literally killing us. Let me ch change it in front of your five-year-old or you're literally killing us. Like, like those ones. Yeah. Basically, you're not free from criticism, right? You should be free from aggression. You should absolutely should be free from aggression. You should be free from having your property seized from you and all that. Those things, you know, absolutely. I feel that everyone should have those rights. However, when they're like trans rights, it's like, mm, it's not really, that's not what they're advocating for. They're advocating for trans privilege. I should be able to go around and do whatever I want and no one's allowed to criticize me in any way, shape or form. If they do, they should go to jail. That's not a right, that's a privilege. Uh, any attempt to define extremism or fundamental British values is very risky because one person's extremism is another person's sincerely held and lawful belief, Kate's told The Guardian. Yes, for example, I want to live in nature in the middle of the forest in a wood cabin with no council tax and grow vegetables and raise my children in the glory of nature by by especially the fbi's definition i'm an extremist 
right? I just want to be left alone. Oh, we got another extremist over here, fellas. I want to be able to express grievances to the state and make jokes without the police kicking down my door. Apparently that makes me an extremist. I don't want dangerous, undocumented criminals and terrorists coming into the country. Apparently, that makes me an extremist. Uh, an obvious example is where I regularly call trans rights activists extremists for believing a man can be a woman just because he says he is, and that this th and that this gives him the right to enter women-only spaces. But equally, I am called an extremist for believing there are only two biological sexes and you can't change sex because that's another thing that the left tried to do. They tried to say, oh, any opposition to us whatsoever is extremism, and extremism is bad. It's a long, long tactic that they've been using since fucking, well, they've been using it since before Gamergate, but, like, recently, they're basically, there'll be a word that everyone in the community has a nasty association with. Nazi. Racist. Bigot extremist and what they do is they take those words that are unpalatable to the public people don't like those things because they've been conditioned to and then they start branding their enemies as those things they try and stick the association onto these people when 90 percent of the time it doesn't fit at all so basically they take words that leave a bad taste in their mouth and try and apply it to their enemies classic stalinist tactic what was that old black and white video that they made about the actual uh, techniques that communists use it's a black and white video of a guy talking about a uh, bulletin that was put out by the Communist Party. Brand your enemies as fascist. Brand them as racist. If you repeat this enough times, eventually the public will believe it. A technique that we're all very familiar with. And all that. Basically, it's that. That's what they try to do, and that's what they're trying to do with the extremism thing. Basically, brand your enemies' perfectly reasonable opinions as extremist and outlaw them. Congratulations, you've banned political opposition, which is very commonplace in our managed democracy. Uh, these are debates that we should be able to have lawfully in society, I absolutely agree. We should be able to call each other extremists, but it also means those views should not be banned, said the MP, one of the leaders for the New Conservatives grouping of Tory MPs. The New Conservatives, is this the, is this the Conservatives that are still trying to stay right-wing? <laughs> and a move that also raises the prospect of unusual alliances emerging between those who might disagree on other issues but who are united by hostility to the proposals kate said she would be raising her concerns with the government and other mps and the government is going to tell you to blow out your arse because it does not care uh, first, uh, frost boris johnson's chief brexit negotiator said on x that he was very much in agreement with a tweet by kate who used the platform to say that a broader definition of extremism was not needed i think i think the line should be a a violence i think that's that that's extremism to me see if some see if someone's just sort of like uh i think we should deport illegal migrants i think that's a perfectly reasonable thing if someone says i think we should execute illegal migrants wait whoa, 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 hold up <laughs> man that's that that's extremism that that's extremism to me i think the line for extremism is violence to me, that's, that's what I feel it is. Uh, what we need is proper enforcement of the laws we have against, for example, incitement to violence, uh, added Frost. The proposals uh, come after a speech outside Downing Street last Friday in which Sunak claimed extremist groups in the UK were trying to tear us apart. What are the extremist groups? Well, everyone that goes against the government narrative. Uh, in a statement that came hours after George Galloway won a by-election in Rochdale, the Prime Minister said, you cannot be a part of our civic life if your agenda is to tear us down. I, have, I don't really plan to cover George Galloway winning his election, but, but one thing I do want to laugh at is uh, the letters that he sent out to people depending on what ethnic group they were from. Like, the one that he sent to, like, native Brits was something like, these immigrants and these illegal migrants are tearing our country apart, but then to Muslim households he sent out the letter, Salam alaikum, my brethren, you should vote for me. <laughs> I, say, I mean, in true politician fashion, where you try and play to every single group, Right, because that's what democracy is. You're trying to satisfy every single group and all that happens at the end of the day is no one has anything even resembling what they want and everyone's miserable. Welcome to democracy. That's the way it works. Uh, the address uh, contained no detail of new policies save for a pledge that the government would redouble support for the Prevent Counterterrorism Programme. Prevent is a, a counterterrorism group that school children who post Pepe memes get referred to, by the way. Really, that's what I... Oh, they, they posted a Pepe meme and they, they get referred to Prevent. 
And then their name's on a fucking list, essentially, forever, in case this person becomes an extremist. Because they posted a fucking pepe. Uh, demands that universities stop extremist activity on campus and take action on extremists entering the UK. Uh, so the, you're going to ban and outlaw all the communist groups then? Have you ever actually spoken to them? They're very honest, by the way. <laughs> like, <clears throat> the hardcore tankies. Like, and I, I do it all the time because I, I try and get them to say, see if they'll say the quiet part out loud. Whenever I'm arguing with them on Twitter, I'll say something like, so... I'm a libertarian, I like freedom, I don't want a state, I believe that anything that I produce from materials that I procured myself and paid for or produced through my own labour, I feel that I have a complete right to them and I owe them to no one else, right? And I believe in freedom of speech and all the other usual lovely stuff. What would happen to me in a communist society? And most of them would just say, Gulag or we'll kill you. So they're extremists. <laughs> That's just, they're like, we will kill you. Right, that to me is extremism. And a lot of communist groups have said that. They have said that they plan complete ideological domination and if you do not bend the knee to their ideology, they will commit violent acts against you. That is extremism. However, fucking, they're allowed to walk around with hammer and sickles on their fucking t-shirts and shit like that. They are extremist groups. So I guarantee you that if it does get passed, those groups will be completely left alone because they're the useful idiots that are serving the totalitarian state that is trying to establish itself. Uh, ministers are also considering proposals to ban MPs and councillors from engaging with groups such as the Palestine Solidarity Campaign, Extinction Rebellion and Just Stop Oil. Like, yeah, the element Extinction Rebellion and Just Stop Oil are annoying and everyone hates them to the point where I genuinely believe that uh, they are a fucking psyop funded by BP and ExxonMobil and all the big oil companies to make people hate climate activists. Genuinely, that is what I believe. Uh, the plans put forward, the, as for the Palestine Solidarity Campaign, I've I've done exactly what I've done in the Ukraine-Russia conflict. I've noped out. Don't you care about Israel or Palestine? Where are those located? Or oh, the far end of the Mediterranean, so not Scotland? Then, then no, I don't care. I don't care about countries or places that I'm not from, that aren't my ethnic people. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I mean, it's terrible. It's fucking awful. But not my pig, not my farm. Uh, the plans put forward by the government's advisor on political violence, John Woodcock, say that mainstream political leaders should tell their representatives to employ a zero-tolerance approach to groups that use disruptive tactics or fail to stop hate on marches. A spokesperson for Palestine Action, a direct action group that has been among those which reports have suggested could be identified as extremists, said any change would not stop its activists and that it was continuing to draw support. There have been attempts before to define it to define extremism before and it did not work but when we are talking about british values as they are i refuse to believe that it amounts to supporting genocide in gaza she told the guardian if anything the recent announcements show that lobbying politicians and going on marches have failed to change the country's stance on israel because uh, again at the, at the end of the day uh, i mean despite all of that it hasn't changed a lot of countries are like no no like we we, we support israel and nothing will make them shift on that. Let's just move on. <laughs> the group's main targets are the sites of an Israeli arms manufacturer, one of its co-founders who went on trial last year, with others for damaging Elbit Systems Limited UK sites, said they were justified because they were trying to stop people being bombed. Now, basically, what is going to happen is the same thing that's been happening for about a decade now, is they're going to pass more laws to attack the right wing. Now, they're trying to... But also, you know... Two birds with one stone, let's get rid of all the right-wing groups, but let's also get rid of uh, all the Palestine, all the anti-Israel groups, all the anti-Zionist groups. So it's uh, two birds with one stone. And again, this is just the way that uh, managed democracy works. People end up, basically, the, the thing that was created to prevent totalitarianism will eventually become that because all you have to do is trick people into voting themselves into it. Manufacture crises, make things a lot worse for people, make things that bad, and then propose a very desperate measure that the people will vote for because things got that bad. But don't worry, it won't be totalitarianism because we live in a democracy. Things like that would never happen. <laughs>